and your presence is very much appreciated. In particular, in particular, thank you. Again. In particular, I want to take note of the presence of uh, Judy Fagan, head of school of Lamas. Well, at least for the next uh, three weeks. Uh, and I also want to welcome uh, Paul Shavid, the new head of school of Ramaz, who actually made his business. Uh, he usually sits way in the back. Uh, that's exactly where he is uh, sitting, uh, next to our Ramaz alumni parent. Uh, and uh, he made it his business to come to New York particularly at this time, uh, in order to be with us for this uh, particular uh, night. Um, I want to take note of the presence of Joel Katz, president of uh, the congregation, uh, and of Suzanne Doff, the, the first lady of Hermas, uh, the wife of the chairman of the board of Hermas, is here with other members of the family, uh, Jacob uh, is traveling for business, and that's good for Ramaz. <laughs> he does well, he'll do well. Uh, uh, but uh, also representing the Ramaz board or a number of people here, but particularly uh, I want to recognize David Stonehill because he not only is uh, uh, an important school leader, but also a member of the incredibly hard-working building committee, which uh, has made possible what we are going to announce uh, this evening. Uh, the program will be relatively brief. Uh, we're now going to say two songs, which express our feelings one year later. Just about almost the exact hour when the fire was discovered. Uh, Monday night, July 11th, uh, 2011. Uh, and then following that, I'll say a few words of <coughs> retrospect, re retrospective thinking and prospective thinking. And then uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Kenny Rockland, the Director of Institutional Advancement at Vermont, to present what I think you will find to be a very, very exciting plan. Uh, let's go to page 633. A song that you will recognize because in KJ we say it every single morning in prayer for America and Israel. This time we're saying it because it reflects our feelings on this anniversary. I'll say one verse, you please say the next. Shira Ma'alo says, So I know the harim, may I in your vow as read. Al ye tame a moat rock lecha, al your num shomarecha. Adonoi shomarecha, adonoi silacha, al yad yeminecha. I don't know you shmor homi kol ro you shmor es nafshecho. I don't know you shmor es esacho vorecho me ato viadolam. And now page 59. This is the song that the Talmud associates with both Hanukkah and Purim. Actually more directly with Purim where there was a feeling of terror on the one hand and on the other uh, redemption and exhilaration. Ms. Moore Shear Hanukkah Sabayas Lidovid. I don't know you how she bati a lecho batir poeni. Zamarul Adonoi Chasidov Vahudu Zeher Kodcho. Ba'ani Omarti Bishalvi Bal Emot Le'olam. 
structure remained intact, even though the fire and water damage were very extensive. But our sanctuary will be restored to its former beauty and grandeur, and as you will learn shortly, it will also be safer and more secure than ever before. We were also blessed because while we lost a shul, we did not lose a community. The morning after the fire, the building committee and all of our building professionals met together in this very room. Together with the lay leadership of the congregation and Ramaz, they met to plan for the reconstruction and rebuilding. Lay leaders and professionals of both institutions 
along with our architects and engineers, have worked for most of the past year to plan carefully for what needs to be done. At the same time, the congregation and the school made plans to relocate and to ensure that there would be no interruption of our religious and educational activities. Worshippers accepted graciously the inconvenience of dislocation. Ramaz educated educators manifested sacrificial devotion and patience in enabling the school to move forward. In a word, an entire community rallied together to maintain a thriving congregation and school. We were also blessed by being the recipient of extraordinary solidarity and support from the New York community. From the firefighters who extinguished the blaze with heroism and effectiveness and contained the damage. From them to the police who gave us protection, to the New York City Building Department which rendered invaluable assistance and cooperation, and to the hundreds of city officials and religious leaders of all faiths who offered every conceivable kind of support and encouragement. In retrospect, it seems like New York became a village dedicated to maintaining the services of a synagogue and a school. Foremost among our supporters were four community institutions. The Metropolitan Museum of Art, which hosted KJ's main service for the High Holy Days of 2011 and which will do so once again this year, 2012, and in a letter that I just received yesterday from Emily Rafferty, the president of the Met. It appears that the Met will give us another year in 2013, which we will leave in order to have our main service on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. She and the whole staff of the Met have been extraordinarily gracious, and it was our privilege to dive in that magnificent museum. The 92nd Street Y welcomed our congregation for a number of Shabbatot and holiday services. Temple Emmanuel accommodated all of the Ramaz lower school classes for over two months last fall and also served as the location for the glorious completion of the 75th anniversary celebration of Ramaz and the upper school graduation. The Park Avenue Synagogue, our neighbor on 87th Street, opened its doors to our early childhood center and opened its main sanctuary to our middle school for the Zibria and the eighth grade graduation. All of this communal support demonstrated that for all of the size of New York, our city is also a family. And I'd like to add one word. It wasn't really accidental that a reform temple and a conservative synagogue housed Ramaz's important events. Because we housed a neighboring conservative synagogue for about 17 years, Congregation Or Zorua, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, in the Ramaz 
upper school on East 78th Street. Until last year, when we simply couldn't do it. But, with God's help, I hope we will be able to do it again. As Rav Soloveitchik once put it, Chesed is a two-way street. Today, I help you. Tomorrow, you will help me. And it's noteworthy that Temple Emmanuel, the Cathedral Reform Synagogue in America, helped us. For it was, helped Ramaz, I should say, because it was in Temple Emmanuel sometime during the late 1920s that the Ramaz, Rav Moshe Zavolin Margolias, sat in the main sanctuary of the temple with his high rabbinic yarmulke at the funeral of the late Louis Marshall. So the circle comes together. A year ago, therefore, KJ and Ramaz suffered a disaster, but as I said at the time, not a tragedy. No one was hurt. Because we were under renovations, not a single Torah scroll was damaged. Not a pew was touched. They were all out to be refinished. The buildings remained essentially intact. We were blessed with strong and effective leadership from the entire KJ and Ramaz community, as well as from the professionals who serve that community. We were blessed by New Yorkers of all faiths who came to our rescue. Finally, we have been blessed by a group of men and women who have met throughout the past year to develop a plan to turn this dreadful catastrophe into, please God, a glorious opportunity. In truth, as we all prayed last year, out of the ashes of destruction are coming the seeds of reconstruction. Or in the words of the psalm we just read, our mourning will yet turn to joy. Our sackcloth and ashes will be exchanged for the garments of happiness. <coughs> to explain how we plan to bring this about. I want to call on the Director of Institutional Advancement for Ramaz, my student and colleague, our own Kenny Rock. Thank you, Rabbi, for the inspirational words and for the overview of the tragedy that we all faced a year ago and the triumphs of the year past. When the tragedy occurred, we knew we needed to immediately begin the work to restore the synagogue to its former glory. And with it was that determination to restore the synagogue and all that it was to what it used to be. After a year of very careful and thoughtful researching and planning, we are now resolved to not merely restore the past, but to create a whole new future for the KJ Ramaz community. Over the next few minutes, I will give you an overview of our goals and a tour of our plans for the future of the KJ and Ramaz facilities. I will show you how we plan to turn last year's catastrophe into a great opportunity for our community. I'm going to start by going through the details of each floor and the section of the renovated sanctuary. 
I will then talk about the expansion for the entire facility, the new gymnasium, the expanded playroof, the new classrooms, the enlarged lobby. So let us begin with the sanctuary. First and foremost, we must ensure that our synagogue is safe and conforms to all of the fire and building codes. To ensure this, we are building better egress in both the men's and women's sections, and we are constructing the synagogue with non-combustible materials. We are replacing the wood structure with steel framing and concrete flooring. In addition to this safety features or these safety areas that we focused on, we are also addressing the comfort of our community. We are going to be equipping the sanctuary with enhanced heating and cooling systems to make the spaces more comfortable throughout the year. In the design phase of this restoration, we wanted to ensure that the result would be a beautiful and glorious sanctuary, yet maintain the elements of the synagogue that have made KJ the religious home to our community. We were very fortunate, as the rabbi mentioned, to salvage the pews, and we also were fortunate to be able to salvage the ark and many of the other elements around the structure of the sanctuary itself. So when the construction is complete and you re-enter the sanctuary, you will find a safer and more comfortable version of the sanctuary that we all love and have become so familiar with over the many years. I'll now take you on a tour of some of the other elements of the new structure of the building. We're now on the lower level. The lower level where the gymnasium, the former gymnasium, or the current lower school gymnasium is. Because we are expanding above the sanctuary, which you'll see momentarily, we are able to remove the gymnasium from the basement, and we're able to build ourselves a beautiful double height chapel space, which will be double the size of the chapel as it was before the fire. It will be also adjacent to a new library. So similar in terms of adjacency as it was formerly, but it will be also an expanded library. We'll use it with updated technology so that all the classes that KJ and Ramaz formerly had in the, uh, the library before will be able to be in this room as well. It will be a wonderful addition to the programming for both school and synagogue. One of the important features that you'll find as I go through the plan are that the stairwells, which were so often a safety issue for many of us, will be improved. There'll be handrails and ratings and what we call improved rise to run. For many of you that recall as you walk through the buildings, certainly going from the basement up to the first floor and then from the first floor to the second floor, on the stairwell that was the west stairwell of the building, it was always very steep and very dangerous as people came out in large numbers. And so we have worked on that, and you'll see how it plays itself out as we continue up the building. So again, now we're going upstairs to the first floor, the lobby floor. What you're looking at over here is the frontage of 85th Street. The main doors will remain as they were to the school building, to the Ramaz building, which is used as the main entrance into the Ramaz and to KJ. The lobby will be an expanded lobby, which will allow for better traffic flow. It will have a gracious entrance over here in this area. And one of the wonderful features is the glass facade that will allow natural daylight to come into the lobby. The lobby itself, once again, will be tremendously enhanced for our community. As we continue to the back area of the lobby, there will be a multi-purpose room. That room will be used Shabbat and Yom Tov and uh, on other important days for both stroller storage 
and uh, often it can also be used for other services or things that the synagogue needs on some of those very days when the building is very overcrowded. We will also use it during the week for the senior lunch and learn program and various other shul activities that are both already in, uh, in action and things that I know that the synagogue has been talking about for future programming. What we're looking at on this side of the first floor is the foyer for the right outside of what the former chapel and library, where the former chapel and library were. And what we have created here is a expanded, or I should say a new entrance into what will become the expanded social hall. It will allow for an easier flow coming down from the sanctuary stairwells and going directly into the social hall as we often use that area for Kiddush and for other community celebrations. And now you're seeing what is the result of removing the chapel and library from the first floor, a beautifully expanded and renovated social hall which will be larger than the current auditorium that we've gotten so used to as our main space in that building. It will be designed for a variety of synagogue and school events, and it will also be used for the school for, as a cafeteria, and I'll show you how that impacts the entire school layout in a few moments. One of the other wonderful features is that it will also have a kitchen, a servery certainly for the students, but also a kitchen for synagogue usage as well. So we've gained a beautiful space in that area. Now we've gone up to the second floor. This is back into the men's section of the sanctuary. So once again, there are going to be all of the remaining structural elements, or many of the remaining structural elements, base structural elements that we've always loved and enjoyed of our sanctuary. The ark itself, the scagliola that we had, all of that will remain. But there will be new enhanced finishes, and there will be better egress as you see around the sides, they will be actually using the former pews, but some pieces and parts will be removed in order to create better egress into the sanctuary. And also, this will no longer be a shared emergency exit with the auditorium. It will be its own egress out of the building in case of emergency. We also will have better access directly into the auditorium which has always been an issue from the men's section of the sanctuary at the conclusion of Shabbat and Yom Tov services. So this will be a more gracious and easier entrance in to the auditorium. Once again, uh, the element of the stairwell, and we can't underestimate how important this is, the stairwell coming down from the ladies' balcony to the auditorium has also always been an issue for many of us. That stairwell will be expanded outward. Again, the concept of the rise to run, so that it would be easier for people to walk down in the groups that we normally do, the large numbers. And we will also have new doors to the east, which will be placed in the auditorium. So the auditorium doors are moved completely to the east. And as you see, the flow is a much nicer flow into this area outside of the auditorium and then directly into our auditorium. The auditorium will remain similar in terms of its square footage, so that, that will be updated, but it will not change in terms of the general square footage that it had. What you're also seeing here on that same second floor is the synagogue offices. They will remain, the rabbi's study, and the various offices will remain here, but there will be an additional office for KJ for the expanded programming that KJ has already taken on and the need that they have on the third floor. Now we're up in the ladies' balcony. So what I was uh, referring to before in terms of safety and egress is a major component of what we've done here in the ladies' balcony. Most of us recall, or many of the ladies obviously would recall that as you tried to leave the sanctuary, there was a very narrow, single uh, person aisle as you walked up and out. That aisle will be expanded by removing the back rows, all of the pews in the back row, on either side of the sanctuary. 
What we've done is that we're going to bring forward the balcony and return that row because we can't afford to lose those seats to this area. So again, we're removing the back row to allow for better egress. It will be a nicer flow. And we're returning those very same seats to expanded balcony section. And of course, one of the many things that will be important to the women as well is, as I spoke about before, the better HVAC systems so that uh, the, the prayer shawls that the men wear and the shawls that the women wear don't, no longer have to be part of the guard in the ladies' section of the uh, synagogue. So as I mentioned earlier, this tragedy created an opportunity to undertake the work needed to pre prepare for both the future success and sustainability of both KJ and Ramat. In order to meet the demands of an ever-growing modern Orthodox population in Manhattan, and here on the Upper East Side, we need to expand the Ramaz facilities. We simply don't have enough room for the large number of applicants who want to come to our school. Ramaz also has an obligation to provide its students with safe facilities that are superior for optimal learning, for physical fitness. So the plans that I am about to walk you through are an expanded and enhanced Ramaz early childhood and lower school facility. Once again, the enlarged lobby will allow for arrivals and dismissals that will be much more uh, easily, it will, it will be easier arrivals and dismissals for the Ramaz parent body. As you see, better access to strollers, it, it will just be a better flow overall. The back space that I showed you before, which will be the multi-purpose room, is a key room for the school as well. It's another area for larger gatherings, morning meetings, gatherings for classes, teacher opportunities for continuing education. It will really be a wonderful additional room for the school. We'll continue to what was the cafeteria, if you recall when I showed you earlier, the social hall, which will be also the cafeteria for the school. I said that we gained something from the school side for this. What we gained, on top of having a very nice lunchroom for our students, is an entire area on the third floor to be able to have dedicated specialty classrooms. So we'll have a music classroom, an art classroom, and a science classroom, and this will be a specialty floor. It will also allow us to make those areas and rooms uh, with all the up-to-date equipment that one needs for these kinds of instructions today. We continue on. Now, remember, for those of you that are very familiar with the way the lower school and uh, the KJ buildings connected, that they were not even. They were offset. So six was seven, six went to seven, and seven uh, connected only on the school side. There was no seventh floor, in theory, on the synagogue building side. And then the eighth floor, once again, in the building connects. So when the architects had to think about how this expansion would work, they had to play that very difficult piece out. And I think they did a beautiful job, and I'll show you the result. So first of all, just to again orient you, this is the south-facing 85th Street. This is where the elevators come up into the uh, come come upstairs, which will remain the same way that they are. This is the existing sixth floor of the school. We will now expand. This is above the sanctuary, and we will have four additional classrooms on the sixth floor, and we will expand what is an undersized room currently to add on to make this into a classroom that's usable for an entire class. What this will allow Ramaz to do is actually open up an additional section on each grade level from kindergarten through a fourth grade. So it's a tremendous opportunity for us. And once again, these classrooms are beautifully sized. We also have another office on this floor and a learning center as well. Going 
now to the eighth floor, as I explained before, the seventh floor doesn't exist as it connects the two buildings. You come off of the elevators, and we have a new, as part of our new wing, a double height gymnasium space that also is natural light lit. It will be a wonderful space once again for both the school and for the synagogue. Uh, it also will be easily accessible from um, the stairs. I mean, it's a, it is a, uh, I guess, eight flights up, but it is accessible from the synagogue side and clearly very accessible here on the school side coming right across on the eighth floor. Once again, we also expand this classroom to make it a usable space, a better usable classroom. The gymnasium also is adjacent to what we call a movement room. The movement room will be used for the early childhood, both of the athletic program and for recreational purposes. And it will be a space that the synagogue programmatically can use as it has a wonderful adjacency to the gymnasium. And again, it will become a community space on weekends. So it will be used, well used by the school during the week and certainly by the community in the evenings and on weekends. When we now go up to the top of the building, the rooftop, many of us sit in the sukkah in this area, and those of you who have children in Ramaz or who know the play roof, this is the existing play roof. Another wonderful expansion is an entirely new outdoor space that we will have. It will be an additional play roof during the week for the children, and we can also have events up there as we started to have many events for both the school and the synagogue on this area of the roof. We'll be able to expand it to this area. And then, of course, the additional sukkah needs that our community, thankfully, has had over these many years will be enhanced by adding an additional sukkah into this area as well. The obvious question is, how long will all this take? When will it be complete? And I know many of you have been wondering, well, you're doing all of this, when can we be back in our home, in our sanctuary, in our school? So I'll walk you through quickly the construction schedule for the KJ Sanctuary. Many of you have been walking by this week, and those of you who haven't seen, we've already started some restoration, um, some work with the stained glass, there's been some removal of different pieces and parts. That will continue during the summer, a very limited amount of work, but Beginning in September, there will be heavy construction taking place in the sanctuary. And that will begin and go directly from September of 2012 all the way through to May of 2014, with no interruption. So there will be precautions taken because school will be in session, but there will be no interruption to the construction during the school day. The Ramaz construction side will begin officially in its full phase in April of next school year, 2013. And we will communicate with our parent body in more detail about how that will play itself out. It clearly will not be in any way dangerous or in any way create a hazard for our children. But we are working with our owner's representatives to come up with ways so that we can begin some of our construction in April. We will go directly through to the end of August, allowing us to get ourselves ready for school. And there will be no construction from September through to the end of March of 2014. We will once again begin in a limited fashion during the school year some area construction from April through to September of 2014. Now if you look at both slides, you see, or both areas of the slide, you see that we allowed ourselves a cushion from June through to September for the reoccupancy of the sanctuary. With God's help and some hopefully continued hard work on all of the parts of our professionals and our lay leadership, we will get back into the sanctuary for the Chagim, for the High Holy Days of 2014, and we will be able to open school on time at, in 2014 as well. And 
I think that you all have heard how exciting uh, this expansion is. I want to all thank you all very much for attending tonight's gathering. Clearly we have worked on turning this tragedy into an opportunity, but it comes at an increased expense to KJ and Ramaz. In order to rebuild the sanctuary after the fire and expand the school to respond to the growing population, we needed to expand the fundraising campaign that we have already begun. In addition, we needed to take this opportunity to financially prepare for the future needs of Ramaz. Therefore, thanks to the generosity of our community, we are now able to designate a portion of the campaign to growing the Ramaz endowment. Enhancing the Ramaz endowment will allow for the future affordability of a Ramaz education for our community. Thanks to the generosity of many of you in this room and those from our community who are not present, we have raised 70% of our campaign goal already. Rabbi Lutkin and I are joined by the leadership of both KJ and Ramaz in our confidence that our community will continue to be generous and allow us to reach our full goal. We look forward to meeting with you individually and with families to discuss in more detail the opportunities that we have for each of you to be part of this historic and transformational campaign. We encourage all of you to remain the refreshments in the back of the room. Rabbi Lutzstein, myself, senior lay and professional leadership of both KJ and Ramaz are here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you all again for being here tonight, and I look forward to building the future of Ramaz and KJ together with you. May our efforts be blessed. Good night. Homegrown talent. Uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I want to just add uh, one point, and then I'm going to ask you all to rise for the singing of Hatikva because I can't think of a more appropriate song than Hatikva, the Hope. Uh, that point is that one piece of this effort. Uh, was not a matter of choice, and that is the restoration of the synagogue. Uh, there was no choice about that. We had to have a shul in which to die, and that shul, as soon as you touch it, requires code compliance and many safety uh, uh, issues uh, that, that we have to address. And so that, there was no choice about. The choice was about the building up. That was optional. And it was the decision of the boards of KJ and Ramaz that this was an opportunity not to be missed. Uh, you don't get such opportunities. Uh, it's a terrible thing that the opportunity was created by the fire. But once the roof was off of the synagogue. It was clear that we should try to do this. And we feel that with your participation and that of the whole community, uh, our 70% that we've raised already will rise another 30% and, and we will complete uh, our goal. Uh, may God help us uh, to realize the dream. Please rise. All of the Yeah.
evening, everybody.